In this demonstration, we're going to continue looking at the SQL Server Configuration Manager, but this time pay attention to the network settings. We can do that by coming over to the left pane and expanding the SQL Server Network Configuration tree. We can see three other nodes are populated, one for each instance of SQL Server on this box. If I click on the instance 01, we can see that I have four specific types of connection. The only one enabled is shared memory. By default in an installation, the other three are turned off, they're disabled, to protect you as you are starting to create this instance and prepare it for a secure environment. If we come down to the TCP IP, do a right mouse click, I could enable it. This time we're just going to go ahead and look at the properties. In this situation, we can define that the protocol is going to wait for some number of seconds. And right now we have it set up that it's going to listen on all IP addresses. What are those IP addresses? If we click on this tab, we can see that right now we have something set as a dynamic port of zero on the first IP address. We could have more, depending upon the number of network cards that we have in place on this machine. Because it is set at zero, we have no specific TCP port assigned. This is dynamic setting. This allows the capability of keeping someone who would know the port number from being able to provide a security attack. You can set it to a static value if you wish. Let's go ahead and click Cancel because we do not want to change anything here. Let's also take a look at the client configuration. In this case, we have the client protocols and these items have to be installed again either by the SQL Server installation or through the application that is installed. If we take a look at the client protocols, we see the same four are available. The only one that's not available in this is the virtual interface architecture to use with a large storage network. We also have the capability of defining how we want the client to communicate with the server. By default, shared memory is the first order and this would work fine on this machine because we're doing the work on this machine. However, if we were in a situation where we really wanted our TCP IP to be set as the first approach of going out onto the network, we can go into its order and be able to move items around. So you can see that we have some disabled protocols and we can be moving the name pipes if we needed to. Or, in this case, I could disable the shared memory so that the first approach is always TCP IP from the client itself. Aliases can also be put in place to assist working with something called the SQL Browser. The SQL Browser allows us to allow, work with a remote server in communicating with the actual name of a box so that we do not have to worry about the TCP IP address in creating a linked server. That concludes demonstration number two for module one.